Are you having trouble with getting worship team members to come to rehearsal on time? It seems like they always show up like 10 or 15 minutes late, and maybe it's just like one person who's doing it, but it's become very frustrating over the past six months that it's been happening, and it seems like it's not getting any better. Let's talk about why worship team members come late to worship rehearsals. Why are your worship team members always late? And I've got to say this at the top of it all. If you want to fix this problem, you have to be willing to recognize this. If you're not willing to recognize this, click off the video because you'll never fix your problem. You have to recognize that people are late to your worship rehearsal and it might be your fault. In fact, it probably is your fault. I know that's not what you want to hear and you're like, oh, Come on, it's not my fault. I'm telling you, like, they are never on time. But just hear me out, all right? You are the leader of your worship ministry. You are ultimately responsible for what happens in your worship ministry. So if you aren't willing to take blame, if you aren't willing to accept that the results that you're getting in your worship ministry ultimately are an effect of your leadership, then you're never gonna fix this. I'll be the first to admit, maybe it is their fault, right? Maybe it is their fault that they're showing up late. But how does that help you? How does recognizing that somebody has a problem looking at their watch and making it a priority to come to worship rehearsal on time, how does that help you? What are you gonna do about it? You're not gonna be able to do anything. So we just have to accept the fact that it is most likely a result of our leadership. This is the mindset that I've taken in ministry. Anything that happens under my leadership is my fault, whether good or bad. And I understand that anything that we accomplish, we don't accomplish on our own. It is through the grace of God. I understand that. I'm just, this is how I filter it through my mind so that I actually take responsibility for the things that happen in my ministry. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, it is how I have responded in leadership that has caused that to happen. It's never the people who are the problem. It is a lack of my leadership. And if we can think about people showing up late to our worship rehearsal that way, then we might actually have a chance of fixing the problem. You can't make people look at their watch when they're by themselves and realize that they need to leave a little bit earlier. You can't make them think that worship rehearsal is really important and being on there, being there on time is really important. You can't force them to do that. You can only control what you can control as the leader in your worship ministry. And so if we simply have that mindset that everything falls under my leadership, the results that I'm currently getting in my worship ministry are a result of my leadership then you might actually have a chance of fixing it. So what does that look like for getting people to show up on time? It means taking ownership of the things that you can take ownership of. And so we need to not attack the person who is late. I got a couple emails this week about people who didn't come to worship rehearsal on time or weren't prepared. And it's always, and I've been here too, is like, this person is not on time. What do I do about them? And here's what I want you to do about them. I want you to not address them right now. If you've never addressed them before, it starts here. I want you to pick up your phone and send out this text. Hey team, can't wait to lead worship with you tomorrow morning. One of the things I wanna focus on this year is being more respectful of your time. I think one of the most tangible ways I can do that is to start our rehearsals on time. So tomorrow morning, I'm making the commitment to starting right at 8.30, seven o'clock, whenever your rehearsal time is. See you in the morning. Send that message to your team and see what happens because here's what's true, I think, is oftentimes one of our lack of leadership things that we do is we wait for everybody to show up on time to our rehearsal or we wait for them to show up to start the rehearsal. So if our rehearsal on a Sunday morning is at eight o'clock and two people aren't there, we're like, you know, we'll just wait We'll wait for them to show up. You know, they're only 10 minutes late, so we'll wait 10 minutes. And they finally trickle in 10 or 15 minutes later, and then you're like, okay, now we can start. And we push that time back over and over again, because if you give people 10 minutes, eventually they'll take 15 minutes, 
other people in your team who would have been on time will realize that you don't actually start when you say you're going to start at eight o'clock and you actually start at 8.15. So they start showing up late and now it's like my entire worship team shows up late. I told them to show up at eight, but they're all showing up at 8.15, some of them at 8.20. Why is nobody on time? And it's because we have constantly pushed back the start time even though we've said it started at eight o'clock, we've actually been starting at 8.15 and people recognize that and other people fall into that rhythm. And so we just need a reset sometimes. So send that text to your team, say, listen, I haven't been faithful to starting on time because we're taking ownership of what we can take ownership of. And one of the things that we need to take ownership of is that we haven't stuck to the start time. So you tell them we are starting on time. We're starting at eight o'clock, not because of anything that you've done, although it's kind of because of what they've done, but not because of anything that you've done, but because of my lack of leadership. You are actually being humble in this response. And this puts the blame on you, number one. So you aren't blaming other people and making them mad. Number two, you set clear expectations of when you're going to start. You give them the time, again, reminding them, but putting the blame on yourself. And then number three, it gives you an excuse to actually start on time. So when that, even if that person shows up late again, 15 minutes late, and you've gone through two songs already, they walk in and they're like, whoa, 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 like what's happening? Like this hasn't happened before. And you're like, you know, I sent out that text last night that we were starting at eight. So we started at eight and it gives you a, an easy way to address the problem. So if you've never addressed the problem before, take stock of your worship ministry, of your worship rehearsals, of your time on Sunday, and think, have I actually committed to starting on time? And I know that it's painful. It's like our drummer isn't here and we really need to run through these songs together. But you can't. If the person isn't there, we're starting at eight o'clock. I don't care if the drummer's here or not. It stinks that they're not here, but that is the only way that you're going to actually start on time is with you making a commitment to start on time. So take responsibility for what you can take responsibility for. Let's continue to talk about this idea of you taking responsibility for what you can take responsibility for. Maybe people aren't showing up to your worship rehearsal on time because you don't have a plan for your worship rehearsal, and you are essentially wasting people's time. Be honest with yourself. How long should your worship rehearsals be, and how long are they actually? Does your worship rehearsal need to be two hours, or are you constantly spending time like figuring things out and transitioning between uh, different songs and like, okay, I've got to pull up this next sheet of paper with my chord charts on it so that we can go into the song, and I haven't really thought about what arrangement we're doing for this song, and so I need to figure that out on the spot. Like, are you wasting people's time? at your worship rehearsal, because if you waste people's time, then they aren't gonna be like, you know, worship rehearsal is from six to eight o'clock, and so I know what I'm committing to. And instead it's like, sometimes it's six to eight o'clock, sometimes it's six to 8.30. Instead of just you having a plan, they know what they can commit to. So do you have a plan for your worship rehearsal? If you don't have one, check out the worship rehearsal blueprint linked down in the description below, and that will show you how to lead the perfect worship rehearsal that leads your team well spiritually, relationally, and musically so that they grow closer to God, grow closer to each other, and are actually prepared to lead worship on Sunday. You need a plan and a lot of worship team members are showing up late because people don't have a plan for their worship rehearsal and they feel like they're wasting their time. So why would I show up early for something that I know is gonna take a million hours to do anyways because the person leading it doesn't have a plan. Now let's say you've put the foundation in place you have recommitted to starting on time and you aren't wasting people's time when they show up, but you actually have a solid plan because you clicked the link in the description below and got the worship rehearsal blueprint. What do you do now if people keep showing up late? Well, we have to set the expectation. So far, we've just reminded people of the expectation, but we have to set the expectation and talk about it again. And this is, I always like to do this at the beginning of the year, or maybe just any transition point in the church calendar. I think there's like, you know, probably four or five transition points, depending on when you're watching this video. I think of coming back in the fall, like the fall 
church season when things pick back up again that's a natural transition point i think christmas time could be a natural transition point like stepping into the advent season to say hey we're going to focus on this during the christmas season obviously the new year is a good time to refocus and say in this coming year we're going to focus on being on time for rehearsal or starting our rehearsals on time or probably Easter too. Like there are natural transition points in the ministry calendar that you can use to re-communicate the expectations that you have for your team. And all you have to say is in this season, we are going to focus on being on time for rehearsal. And once again, I would put it on myself. We don't want to address one person because everybody knows who's late to rehearsal, right? Like it's not a secret. So if you put it on yourself, I think it softens the blow a little bit and said, Hey, I want to be more diligent in starting rehearsals on time. So in this season, in this Advent season, in this new year, as we step back in to the busyness of the church calendar during the fall, whatever it is in this season, we are going to focus on starting our rehearsals on time, comma, and I am going to be more diligent in having a thought out plan for our time together so that not only do we start on time, but we end on time. If you get that worship rehearsal blueprint down in the description, you will see that the first thing on it is not even the plan for your worship rehearsal. It's charting out your starting and your ending time. You need not just a starting time, you need an ending time as well, and that will honor the people's time on your worship team. So set the expectation again, and once again, put the blame on you. And now comes the hard part, holding people accountable to the expectation. This is where so many worship leaders get it wrong, is we can say these things, but if our actions don't line up with our words, then people aren't going to be on board with it. Because they're gonna think, I know Spencer said this 14 times, but you know, I've shown up late, like a couple times to rehearsal and he hasn't really done anything about it. So it's, he's probably not that serious about it. And so you have to show people that you're serious about it by holding them accountable. So after you set this expectation, the first time somebody is late to rehearsal, if it's like that person who has been late for the past year, this gives you the opportunity to talk to them about it. And I wanna be really careful here because we don't wanna be passive aggressive about this. We don't wanna be like, Oh, I noticed you were late again. No, we want to be genuinely curious as to why they're late because there might be some good reasons that they're late. So all you have to do is ask somebody, hey, you know, I noticed that you were late to rehearsal tonight and like for the past couple weeks, actually, uh, is there like something in your schedule that's keeping you here from being here on time? And you might learn like, your rehearsal is at six, they don't get off work until 5.30, and so it's really hard for them to get from work to rehearsal on time. Or you might learn that like their kid had uh, some practice that week, and that's why they were late. Like there are other factors in people being late, not just that they didn't wanna show up on time. Sometimes people have real life things that happen, and so you have to talk through what that looks like, and we lead with grace, but we also lead with confidence because we know that having people on time to our rehearsal is what's best for our worship ministry. We can't just keep pushing it back. So don't be passive aggressive. Legitimately seek to understand why that person is late and then work on helping them overcome that, whatever it is. Maybe you're gonna find out that half of your team is late because they don't get off work until 5.30, like I said, and you have a worship rehearsal at six and they just have trouble getting there. So maybe you're gonna learn that you just need to push your worship rehearsal back a half an hour and then people will be there on time. It could literally be that simple, but you will never know if you never ask people, what's going on? Why are you late? And then you have to think to yourself, okay, what happens? when this person is late. And it doesn't have to be a mean thing. It's not like you were late, so you can't play on Sunday. It's like we believe in the value of being on time to rehearsal so that we don't waste other people's time and so that we can finish what we need to do when we need to do it. And so if you can't commit to that, then maybe this just isn't the season for you to be on the worship team right now. And that is never the starting place. I think so many people wanna start there because they've been so angry about it and they've never addressed it. They've only complained about it to other people. So do not start there and say, if you're not on time, the next worship rehearsal, then you can't play on my worship team ever again. Have the conversation with them. 
It's not a black and white thing where this person has shown up late 15 times and I've never said anything to them, but I finally had the last straw with them. Just talk to them and tell them like, I noticed you've been late. Well, I really would like it if you'd be on time. Being in leadership means that we have to have tough conversation sometimes. So just have the conversation and address the problem. And if they continue to be late, then we hold them to the expectation and say that if you're going to continue to be late, like you can't play on Sunday morning. And we do all of that not to say to the one person, I don't like you and I don't want you playing on my worship team because you're always late. We do that because we know that it is the only thing that will create a culture of timeliness in our worship ministry. You need to create a culture of timeliness in your worship ministry. If this is really the point of frustration for you and it needs to be fixed and you know it needs to be fixed, then sometimes we have to do things that are uncomfortable to create a culture of timeliness. So stick it in your code of conduct whenever you have new members join your worship team and have them commit to it, put it in front of their faces there. And then I just wanna say this isn't a one-time conversation, right? It's something that you're gonna to have to remind your team of over and over and over again until it sticks. And then once you've communicated it a million times, communicate it a million more times and they might finally start to grasp it. But this isn't something that changes overnight. It's not like you can put your foot down and say, we're doing this now, if you don't fall in line, you're out of here. That's probably not the best way to lead, even though that's what a lot of us feel like doing from time to time. I know I have felt that way before in the past. If you have allowed, once again, taking responsibility for ourselves, if you have allowed your worship ministry to get to this point, understand that it didn't get to that point overnight. It happened over a year or two, and it's probably gonna take a year or two to cycle it back to where it should be, but you will only get there whenever you take responsibility and hold people accountable and create that culture again of timeliness. Now, the most practical way to get people to start showing up on time is to use a transition season, implement a plan for your worship rehearsals and start doing things with excellence. And that's why I put together the worship rehearsal blueprint down in the description below. In that, I will show you how to lead the perfect worship rehearsal that your team will love because they are developed spiritually so they grow closer to God, relationally so they grow closer to each other, and musically so that they're prepared for Sunday morning. So check that out down in the description below. That will be, I think, the kickstart that you need to start leading your worship rehearsals with excellence. And when you do that, people will want to show up on time to your rehearsals. So check that out down below. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me. Till I see you in the next video, keep leading worship well.